Hi, this is Paul, City Sailing. Thanks for watching our tutorials. This tutorial is on weather. We're going to talk about frontal systems. Before you watch this video, I really urge you to watch the other videos on weather because uh, diving straight into frontal systems, you might get a bit confused. So a little recap here. This is um, the Earth and the system of the driving of the weather. So we've got the equator here. It's hotter on the equator because the concentration of the sun's rays is more on the equator than it is on the poles. So on the equator, it heats up to radiation of the sun, just like the bonfire effect. The air goes up, cools, and it produces this circular motion, which is called the Hadley cell. On the poles, because it's really cold, because there's less radiation from the sun, the air falls down because it's heavier. It will fall down and it will produce this circular motion of air, which is called the polar cell. Geared between the two, we have the ferrule cell. So where we've got the polar and the ferrule meeting, it's called the polar front. And that's because we've got the cold air coming down and the warm air coming up. And then as it rises up, it produces low pressure. So on the polar front, we've got the low. Where the air is sinking, will get high. And in our last video, we talked about the weather with air coming up, low pressure, air falling down, high pressure. So depending on where these cells are, relative to where we are, is determines the weather we're gonna get. Okay, we're gonna talk about the weather we're gonna get on the polar front. So with the polar front, I'll say again, cold air coming down, warm air going up. Referring back to our video with the experiments, warm air meets cold air, condensation's produced, condensation then sticks on small particles, produces clouds, clouds build up, we get rain. This is what's happening on the polar front. And the other thing that's happening is that due to the Coriolis effects or the bending of the wind here, instead of coming straight down from the top, straight up from the bottom and being a straight line, because of the Coriolis effect, it's the same as putting a huge spoon in the atmosphere, giving it a good old mix up and the polar front bends all over the place. So we're gonna talk now about the polar front, how it affects us and how we can predict the weather and understand the weather where we are. So this is a picture of the polar front and it just shows here that it doesn't stay in a straight line. And due to the Coriolis effect and the wind mixing from the cold at the top, the warm at the bottom, it can be mixed up. So here it is really mixed up with a bit of warm, warm air up here. So this is the photo front. It's not stationary. It's moving all the time. So here this shows that the cold air is heavier than the warm air. And we can see this wedge underneath. So it's wedging underneath the warm air. Okay, cold air, warm air. Here we have, because of the Coriolis effect, the air is coming at an angle with the cold, an angle with the warm, and it starts mixing up. So at the beginning, it will be like this, straight, then it will start mixing up. Warm air right over the top of the cold air. The cold air on both sides wedge underneath the warm air. And as it grows, this wedge will get bigger and bigger. Okay, so again, warm air riding up, up, cold air pushing underneath. And this diagram shows here, warm air riding over the top, and then the warm air riding over more, the cold air wedging underneath both sides, but wedging more on this side underneath. And then as it's swirling round due to the Coriolis, we've got the warm air coming here, and it's coming over the top. So this section here, the warm air is actually sitting over the top of the cold air. Okay, and right towards the end, the warm air is forced right up and it's sitting above the cold air. And as we said before, where warm air and cold air meet, we get rain. So we've got rain over this line, rain over this line, rain here where the cold air and the warm air is meeting, and we'll get rain as the warm air cools down, condensation happens, clouds form, and it rains. You may be familiar with this diagram, it's what you see on a weather map. So we have the cold air on this side, cold air on this side, and the warm air here. The cold air is heavier, so it's trying to push underneath here, push underneath here, and wedge this warm air up. So these systems tend to go 
from the left to the right. And if we're standing here, we're in the cold air, and relative to us, we will then come into the warm air. And that's why the edge between the cold air and the warm air here is called the warm front, because as it goes past, you'll then experience warm air. They'll then go through, then we'll meet the cold air again, and this is the cold front. So the symbol on the weather map for a warm front is these bumps here, and the symbol for a cold front are these triangles here. When the warm air has been forced above the cold air, it's not on the land, it's up in the sky, and this is shown as an occluded front, and that's shown on the weather map as a triangle, then a bump, triangle, then a bump, and it will show the occluded front. So here from a weather map, we have the warm air in the middle, we have the warm front here, the cold front here, and the occluded front where the warm air has been forced above the surface. So here we have the warm air riding over the cold air, the cold air wedging up underneath. And this part here is where the warm air has been forced above the surface and it's an occlusion. So let's talk about the warm front. So it's the beginning that we see where the we have the cold air and then we're moving into the warm air and it's called the warm front. So here's a cross, cross section. So we've got here where we're standing and the whole system will move across this way from left to right and as we come in we'll experience the warm front so what happens so we're here in the cold air the warm air has been pushed above the cold air so the warm air pushing above the cold air and we get a build up the cloud as we start so we'll experience from here so we'll see these clouds as we go through so we see the high wispy clouds called the cirrus then we get the cirrus stratus. So cirro means high, stratus means layered, so we get high layered. Alto means middle, middle, stratus means layered, so we get middle layered. Then we get nimbo stratus, so layered fluffy ones here, and we'll get rain. The rain will generally happen about 200 miles from the front on the land. So we'll see a small amount of rain, and it'll build up and build up and build up. And it's one of those days where it doesn't seem that it's raining much, but it gets you quite wet. So the first cloud we'll see will be the cirrus clouds. It will look something like this, sometimes called mare's tails. It's very high up and it's wispy. So cirrus stratus is layered cirrus. Sometimes when we see the sun, we see a sort of a halo between the sun. So if we see a, a halo on the sun, um, that means that a front's coming through and it's likely to rain and the weather's likely to change. Stratus means layered. Cumulus stratus means layered fluffy clouds. And then when we get the... Uh, the front, it will rain. So on the warm front, we'll get a stratus cloud, continuous rain, poor visibility, and the air pressure will fall. So if we look at it again, cloud building up, about 200 miles out, it will start raining, and then we'll get to the edge of the front here, we'll feel, we'll feel like it warms up. So it's cold air, from here, we'll get warm air, and it feels all warm and muggy, and it's warmed up. So in the warm sector, we'll get showers, poor visibility, the barometer will fall, but it'll fall less. It'll be sort of steady falling. Um, and will feel sort of muggy. Uh, those days where you put your waterproofs on, but it's still hot underneath them. Then we get to the cold front. So we've gone from here, warm front here. So we have the clouds build up from the cirrus, rain about 200 miles out. And then as we get to here, we get into the warm sector. It will feel muggy. We won't see much of the sky. Um, there'll be low cloud, and then we get to the cold front. The warm front tends to be about 3 degrees. The cold front tends to be about 5 degrees. So the cold front's actually shorter. So the rain on the warm front, as I said, 200 miles. On the cold front, it may be 50, 60 miles. And because that rain is concentrated, will be like steroids. You know, the huge rain that we get, lashings of rain, cold front. And we'll get steeper clouds on the cold front. So here we go. Steeper angle, cold air pushing in. And we'll get here, these tall towering clouds will give us a steroid to rain. And there's a few clouds left afterwards that will give us gusts and it will give us um, squally showers. So the clouds we'll get with it will be cumulus. So the big towering cumulus clouds. And cumulonimbus, which are quite powerful clouds and will give us some quite serious downdrafts. So we need to watch out for those when we're sailing, prepare for a reef. 
and on the front we'll get lashings of rain. It would just rain and rain and rain. The good news is it shouldn't last too long as long as that front's going through. Now here's our uh, Cuno Nimbus and the clouds going up and down and here we'll get lightning, we'll get rain and hail and gusty winds afterwards and there's a lot of energy going on here and a lot going on in your cloud. And they say on a good uh, Cuno Nimbus the energy going on in there is equivalent to about 10 atomic bombs and it can weigh over a million tonnes in moisture. So the cold front, we get cumulus clouds, squally winds, heavy rain, visibility becomes good, and the air pressure on the barometer will rise after the front. Not as complicated as it looks. So we've got the weather map here. We've got a cross section here. This line here shows the air pressure. This line here shows the temperature. So let's, go, let's talk it through as we go through. So here we've got the pressure from here will be steady. Then it will drop. Okay, so here we are here. Pressure dropping. The beginning of the front is going to be here. So we're going to get the cirrus clouds. Then we're going to get the cirrostratus clouds. And then we're going to get the stratus. Um, and then more cloud here. At about um, 200 miles off, we're going to start getting rain. It's going to be like sort of patchy rain, you know, very light rain. Um, if we look at the clouds sometimes, we will see darker clouds at low level. And what that is, it's raining, but it's re-evaporating, showing us darker clouds. So if you see re-evaporating clouds, that means it's about to rain. Um, so then we'll get the pressure beginning to drop, the wind changing more um, to the south, and the wind increasing. And then when we get to the front, we'll find there could be fog on the front, called frontal fog. Um, the rain will stop, the wind will go more to the west, and it will get warmer. So here we go, here's the temperature rising. As we hit the front, it's risen. And it's going to stay hot all the way through the warm sector. And then we're going to get layered cloud, cumulus clouds, and it's just muggy, and the clouds are hanging there, and we don't really see much of the uh, the sun at all. Then as we hit the cold front, we'll get the big cumulonimbus cloud. So here we go, on the cold front, cumulus nimbus cloud. We'll get the rain. The rain's over about 50, 50 60 miles. The temperature will rapidly drop as we go through the front and the air pressure as we go through will rise and the wind here will go to the north northwest and what we'll get here is really increased visibility. Afterwards we get some of the breakaway from the Cuno Nimbus and these will be um, rain clouds. In these we'll still get gusts, squalls and rain. So that's a cross section of a frontal system, warm front cold front. Now here we have a diagram of an extremely low pressure and you can see here very rare for the pressure to go down to 916. So with these lines here, these lines of equal air pressure on your weather map, closer they are the windier it is and the wind will tend to go anti-clockwise around your low. So this is your occluded section so the clouds so the warm is above the cold. Here we have our warm front, here we have our cold front. Occluded fronts. This is where the warm air has been pushed above the cold air. So here we have the diagram we had before. Cool air, cool air, warm air. So the cold front here moves faster than the warm front and catches up with the warm front. So occlusion is often slow moving and associated with heavy rain. So this pushes the warm air up so it cools and reduces the strength of the system. So depending on how much warm air we have here, depending on how much rain we have. So as it dissipates, we get light rain, light rain. When it nearly gone, the rain will stop, but we'll still have the cloud. So on occluded fronts, we'll get stratus and cumulus cloud. We'll get prolonged period of rain, heavy rain and squally winds as the front passes, the wind backs as the front passes, visibility becomes good, and the barometer will rise. So synoptic charts, these are weather maps. Um, we can get them from the website, we can get them from the television, BBC television give them. Um, let's have a look at the synoptic charts and how to read them. So here we have high pressure system. So the air is falling down, this will be stable. Here we have a low pressure, low pressure. So this high pressure here, if it's stable, what it would do, because the air is going here clockwise, if it's established, it will push this low pressure around. And it's sometimes known as a blocking high, which is blocking the bad weather coming in. And it'll push this low up and round. And the air will go clockwise around the high, and it'll go anti-clockwise around the low. 
We've looked at this before, depending on where the air is coming from as to the weather we're going to get. So if it's generally from the north, it's cold. From the south, it's warm. It's coming over the land, it's dry. Coming over the sea, it's moist or wet. So here we have with the isobars, which are these lines here, the lines of equal air pressure. So you see there's a big distance between this isobar and this isobar, so there's light winds. So high pressure in the middle, light winds. These isobars are closer together, so we'll get stronger winds. So two highs tend to join to form a ridge of high pressure. If two highs join together, you'll get a ridge of high pressure. There's the two highs coming together, and it will join a ridge of high pressure. So here we have a ridge of high pressure all the way across. And this area is called the Azores High, because we quite often get the high pressure here on the Azores. So two lows together join to form a trough of low pressure. Here they are joining. And we've got a trough. So we've got a low and a low. And they're joining to give a trough of low pressure. And we can see here, we can see the warm front, the cold front, the occluded front. And the air goes anti-clockwise around here, blows slightly in. And we can see these isobars are really close together, which shows it's windy. So high and low together squeeze the isobars together, so increasing the pressure gradient and creating strong winds between the two. So we get a high and a low squeezing together. Where they join here, we'll get higher winds. So here we go. Rising air, descending air, where they're converging, converging wind, it will accelerate the wind. So stronger wind between high and low pressure. So we've got a high here, low here. This gap here, we've got converging winds, so we'll get stronger winds. So the track of the Atlantic systems come across the jet stream. The jet stream is on the polar front, which is between the polar cell and the ferrule cell. We've talked about that. If that means nothing to you, go back to our early tutorials on the cells and global weather. And if you look at the weather map, sometimes we'll see this dotted line. This dotted line here represents the jet streams. Okay, let's go through some of the day skipper questions. Um, we've gone it into gone through the weather in quite a lot of detail. So what we're going to do is go through the typical questions that you're likely to be asked in the day skipper. Let's go. Okay, so they'll show you a low pressure and a high pressure. And they'll say, what is the wind direction? So what is the direction of the wind in A, B or C? So we know in a low pressure here, it goes anti-clockwise. In a high, it goes clockwise. In a low pressure, the wind goes towards the middle. High pressure, it goes outside. So what I suggest you do is you put your plotter on the line, draw the line, bring it in 20 degrees, and that will give you the direction. Same here. In 20 degrees, it will give you the direction. On A, out 20 degrees, and it will give you the direction. So there we go. So A will be southwest. B will be northwest and C will be south. So describe the weather in conditions A, B and C. So A is under high pressure. So we've got stable weather and the wind is blowing out 20 degrees, no rain. B, cold front. We've got all the uh, systems associated with the cold front. C, just before a warm front, all the systems associated with the warm front. So if we throw you back to the diagram we looked at before, which is this one. So on the low, C and B. So C here, we've got the pressure falling, we've got rain, and we've got a um, high level of cloud, and the temperature is falling. Okay, B, we're on the cold front. We've got cumulonimbus, the big towering clouds. We've got stair rods of rain, and the temperature is falling, and the pressure is rising. So what do they say? A is in high pressure system, settled weather, light winds, poor visibility, your barometer is steady, which means air pressure is steady. B, cold front, squally winds, heavy rain, visibility becoming good once it goes through and the air pressure is rising, the wind will go around to the north and it will clear. C, warm front, continuous rain, poor visibility, air pressure falling. Thank you for watching our tutorial on weather fronts. This is City Sailing. This is only part of a few tutorials on weather. And they've got lots of other tutorials on navigation and day skipper. So thanks very much for watching. We look forward to seeing you in the future. This is Paul, City Sailing, out.